just checked, and about 90% of you are not subscribed to my channel. If you're new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe. And now for today's video. So again, uh, if you guys aren't um, familiar with my channel, I do a lot of M Creator tutorials and stuff like that, and create a whole bunch of uh, user uh, member suggestions. Uh, one of the things that we'll be covering today is basically remote redstone. So basically, as you can see, this is being powered into this block here, which is basically going to a remote block, which is triggering a redstone pulse on and off. Uh, the easiest way to kind of demonstrate this is to kind of just come to the back of this uh, subscribe sign. So again, please do subscribe so I do get more uh, views and stuff like that. So we have uh, this being toggled on by this redstone signal here. Basically what's going on is every time this timer goes around, it basically triggers the block for here, and then that basically goes and updates the block to turn between a block that is powered and one that is not. So that's basically the gist of remote um, redstone, I guess. It's not really too complicated. Uh, the only thing that you need to do is basically link it up. So to be basically link it up, all you need to do is grab one of these blocks and then place it down somewhere and then you just need a some sort of linking system in order to actually link it up so I believe under tools I have a remote uh, tool which I can right click on this block it'll detect if it's a on or off one and then it will basically save that position and then what we can do is we can go ahead and place down a signal block and then link it up. So basically once it does that, it passes over the variables from the location to the signal block. And then if this is powered, we can just use a redstone lever to basically turn it on or off. So as you can see, this is basically turning that block on or off there. So that's basically it. Um, I have some examples obviously that you can do. I have a a um, couple signals, I can change this over to that one and then we'll kill that um, interesting mushroom. So, got some leather and steak from that. And uh, what else do I have here? I don't think I'm using that one for anything, but obviously the subscribe one, I can turn it on or off just with a red redstone torch or hook it up to a redstone timer and it will do its thing. And then there is one last thing I have planned. So over here we have some TNT. See if it actually starts blowing up upwards. Okay, it didn't actually have the effect that I was thinking that it would have, but... Thought maybe blowing it up from the bottom would be good. Yep. Based, I think it ran into a water pool, which I ironically missed, so that's probably why I didn't blow the rest of it up. But yeah, anyhow, uh, yes, yeah, you can basically do anything with it. Down here, basically what I had was just one of the blocks uh, for the receivers, um, or not the receivers, the, uh, what do you call it, the remote block. And then I just triggered it with some redstone and TNT. And basically that lever from over by that control center over there is basically what triggered it. So basically just turning on this lever here would have turned it on and then it would have powered the red or the TNT causing a chain reaction. So that's basically it. Uh, pretty simple stuff. Um, there's only like three procedures, three blocks and one item. So let's uh, go into Creator and I'll kind of break down of how it all works. All right, so again, there's uh, three blocks. Uh, there's the signal block, the remote blocks for on and off states, and then there is the on and off states for the uh, signal blocks themselves. So there's one for each one of those uh, particular blocks for the, uh, I believe it's a redstone on and redstone off. So basically what happens is it will basically be triggered based on the uh, state that it's in. So I'll explain that in a little bit. 
then we have a um, version here which is for oh pardon me that's for the signal block so if it's on or off it's basically triggering the signal block and then we have the last procedure which is for the item and the items right here and then what we are basically doing is we're adding a right click event for when we're right clicking on a block and then it will basically pass the variables over from the location that we got so starting with the item we'll start there because that's actually really important to kind of get down so let's get into the item first so the item just uses a simple item texture uh, there's nothing fancy about that uh, we have it just set to a minimum stack size of one so we don't uh, need multiple stacks of items and stuff like that it's just probably better that way so you don't have to worry about mbt data and stuff like that separating at all um, no food properties no uh, advanced properties and the only trigger that we have is when right clicked on block so if we open up that procedure we have basically a condition where we're testing if we're right clicking on the the actual remote blocks we're testing for both the uh, the one that's off and the one that's on so those have little notes on it so you can see what one you actually need and we're test using an or statement, so it can be either or of one of these. So if it's either on or off, uh, rather than both on and off. So that's important to use an or statement. Uh, then what we're doing is we're basically saving the block position X, Y, and Z. And we're just getting the position of the block, so X, Y, and Z, to the item. So we basically tell it that it can basically... Um, Go ahead and save that uh, position where we just right clicked on those remote uh, blocks themselves and then lastly what we're doing is we're just have it has position which uh, will be enabled this just tells the item that we can actually link it up to a um, signal block which is kind of required in order to have the coordinates so if it has not been used yet for the item for linking it up then it's not going to run this actual condition which is important because it would probably not have the variables in order to actually link it up to any coordinates so that's why I have that catch there just in case um, the other thing that we're doing in this condition is we're testing if the uh, has position so if that's true and that we're right clicking on a signal block so if it's if these two things are true then what we're doing is we're just basically getting the um, position of the block for the item the block position X the one that we just set up here and then we're applying that to the block which is also for the variable uh, block position and then the uh, direction of the um, axis so X Y or Z and then we're just printing out messages uh, for the last three other items so save position linked the remote block to signal block and then there's also right click on a remote block to save the position so those are the three help messages that I have so that's basically that procedure um, that only leaves two I think left so we need to actually understand how the the remote blocks work now so we'll cover that right now so we'll take a look at the remote block off first and basically I just have a simple texture set up here. All the other properties are pretty much the same. Uh, the only thing that I have is under this page here is for it to be under the redstone tab. That's where most of the redstone stuff goes. And outside of that nothing else here needs to be changed. We have a couple different settings here. Now this is for the off one, the remote block off. Uh, what I've done is under the uh, redstone properties does redstone connect to this block I enabled this but I have the does red does emit redstone disabled and I'm not using any of the redstone power for this particular block but it does connect so that's important and under triggers there's no triggers we're just basically connecting to redstone for this particular block uh, the one that's on so the one that's on basically same idea the only difference is we have it set to emit redstone and that the emit 
amount is set to 15. We could use a condition and all that other stuff to actually set it up, but in this case, we're just going to emit a uh, level 15, uh, which is the highest amount of uh, redstone power that we can actually generate. Again, it can connect to redstone dust. That's important as well to keep that consistent throughout your actual blocks. So again, triggers, no triggers, then there's no other settings that need to be mentioned. All right, so the signal block is a little bit different. Um, we have basically the, all the same properties up until we get to um, the advanced properties. And then we're just basically allowing it to connect to redstone, but it's not emitting any redstone signal. And then under um, block entity, what we have done is we enabled the tile entity part so we can basically go ahead and use a MBT variables. So from that, what I have is I've just set the inventory size to zero and I have just disabled these two blocks uh, because or boxes because we don't actually need them. Uh, for the triggers though, we have two triggers for when the block is powered. Uh, this is called redstone on. And what happens is when the block has a signal attached to it from the connected redstone, this will be triggered. When it's off, this one will be triggered. So again, those are the, what those two redstone uh, triggers actually do. Uh, in those procedures, I'll just quickly go over what they do. This one is basically just getting the position of the block position that we saved from the remote uh, item, the item that we basically pass the variables over to. And then what we're doing is we're basically testing if the block um, is located at those coordinates. So we're testing for the coordinates that we just saved to the variables. And then we're testing if it's a off block. Now this is for when we want to turn or when the signal is on for the block, uh, the receiver itself or the signal block. So basically when the signal block, block is powered, we're testing if it's not the block that as at that location is not powered. So it is not on. And then we're basically replacing it with an on block. So that's as simple as it really gets. It just basically tests if it's off and then we'll turn it on if this block is powered. Uh, the other one, uh, when redstone off. So redstone off does the exact same thing, only in reverse. So basically it's testing if the, when the, the, the block is, the, the signal block is not powered, it's going to test if the block is on at that coordinates. So if it is the uh, remote block is on, then it's going to replace it to the off model. And everything else is handled through the actual uh, remote blocks themselves. So again, that can be seen under the advanced tab in the redstone connectivity and stuff. Uh, this is all controlled by those blocks. So that's basically it. That's um, really as simple as it gets for actually setting up a wireless redstone. So uh, if you are new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe, uh, comment down below, rate the video, and I will see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Peace out.